Hello, my name is John Clothier and I'm a wood turner from the UK. Today I'm going to show you how I made this 18 inch oak burr wall hanging, how I coloured it, how I used pyrography to apply some texture and all done using my record power Coronet Herald. So before I get on with the turning, let's just have a look and see where I am at the moment. So I've got this huge piece of oak burr and it's about one inch thick and it's about 18 inches at its widest point and goes down to about 12 inches at the narrowest point. And as you can see, it's a fairly rugged, live edged shape. I've got this mounted on a face plate and it's obviously mounted on the Coronet Herald in an outboard fashion. And this is one of the main selling points to me about this lathe. Having a small workshop, I can have this lathe without having a huge, great big lathe and still do this kind of outboard turning. So I've got my outrigger in place. I've got my large uh, rest. Everything's secured down. Everything's locked. Nothing's going to move. I've put the belt down to the uh, lowest setting so that I've got the most amount of power. Although this lathe is incredibly powerful, I actually don't need it for the power, but it just gives me a little bit more control over the speed. This is not going to be something I can turn quickly. At the moment, I've got the speed set to 350 revs, and that might even be a little bit too fast once I get going. The first step is to true up the front. Once I've trued it up, I'm going to sand it. I'm going to sand it with a flat orbital sander rather than with the traditional methods by hand. This allows it to keep it much flatter and it's much easier to work around the live edge. When I've done that, I'll start to work out a design and carve that in. So first of all, let's get it flattened off. So the blank's all trued up now and all flat. And as you saw, I sanded it with the orbital sander all the way down to 400 grit. I've now marked out on it some lines. And these are areas that I want to try and create some features. So I'm gonna start with a dome in the center with a sort of secondary dome around it. Then a small gap, and then it's gonna be a recessed curve. Then a small gap, and then a couple of lines, big of a gap, three lines, bit of a gap, two lines. Let's get on with it. Okay, so that's all the turning done. So, as you will have seen, I used a skew, effectively like a negative rake scraper, in order to make these two domes. I then used a round nose scraper in order to get this recess here. For the lines, I used a diamond point um, carbide tool. The reason I used that tool is it's got a really nice wide, but flat, small cutting point. And that gives me these nice thick, but not too deep, lines. You could use a skew or many other tools for doing it, but I just prefer to use that because I just find it a little bit easier. So now what I need to do is give it all another sand. Now obviously I don't need to touch these areas because they've already been sanded and you're not going to get sandpaper inside the grooves. So I'm going to concentrate on these two three areas here where you've got the two domes and the recess and I will sand those all the way to 600 because that is where we're going to put some colour. Right, so that's it sanded all the way down to 600 grit. Um, and I've kind of come out this way a little bit as much as I could. But obviously because of the live edge, you do have to be careful as you're sanding towards the edge, which is why I used the orbital sander earlier. So now it's going to have time to apply some color. 
and I'm going to be using um, a water-based color for this. I'm going to be putting a sort of a dark red in the center, then a black ring, and then this recessed area is going to be brown. So I folded up my tissue into a small little pad. I've got my color, spray a little bit on, away from the, from the piece, and start applying. Okay, so that's the red done, and now it's gonna be time to apply the brown. You may have noticed I haven't concerned myself too much with keeping within the area. When we put the black on, that's gonna cover up any of that red that's overspilled anyway. And it'd be the same with the brown when I go this way. But as I come out, I do wanna just try and be a little bit careful because I don't wanna get any brown onto that section. So that's the colouring complete. Again, quite straightforward. This is a very simple project, but it's very effective. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna give it a good coat of Danish oil. And I like to apply this with a small brush with something like this, because you can get right into all the little nooks and crannies. So I'll give this a coat, I'll leave it to dry for 24 hours, then give it another coat. I'll probably repeat that process two or three times. And when I've done with that, we'll come back and we'll do some pyrography. So several days later and the oil is now fully cured. I've given it a bit of a buff off with a nightwear pad just to kind of get rid of any little high spots or any bits of excess oil that may have remained. Now I'm going to apply some pyrography and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a ball ended tip in my pyrography pen to just put some little dimples on the inside of these uh, rings. And so with the pyrography rings now complete, and I've put one on the outside and one just on the outside of the centre recess, it is now complete. All that's left to do is to take it off the lathe and deal with the back. For that, just a small infill with some uh, sawdust and sand it back, and that'll be done. A small little brass hook, maybe on a stand. That depends on how somebody wants to use it, I guess. Anyway, that's the end of the project. I hope you found it entertaining and useful, maybe consider doing something like this yourself. This is one of the great advantages of the Coronet Herald lathe, is that you can do these bigger pieces. Hopefully see you again soon. Bye for now.